The House will come to order. Members elect, please take your seats. Sergeant at Arms. The House is now in session. All persons not entitled to privileges on the floor, please retire to the gallery. I would ask the members elect and guests to give a warm welcome to our special guest musical performers today from the Richmond Symphony Chorus who will be singing our national anthem. And I would direct the Sergeant at Arms to grant them privileges of the floor and to escort them now to their place in the well. The members elect will rise and be led in prayer by the Reverend Dr. Jack Knapp, Executive Director Emeritus of the Virginia Assembly of Independent Baptists, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, followed by the singing of our national anthem by the Richmond Symphony Chorus. The Bible instructs us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that prayers be made for kings and all that are in authority. It is for this reason that I ask you to join me in prayer this afternoon. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come to lay our petitions before you. At this beginning of the 2016 session of the General Assembly, I come to pray for your blessing upon these 100 delegates. I pray that as they face the onslaught of nearly 3,000 pieces of legislation, that you will give to each of them the wisdom to discern what is best and right the strength to make good decisions, and health through the long hours and days ahead. I also pray for their staff members and for their families. I know that the separation for husband, wives, and children can be difficult at times, so bless and keep them safe in the delegate's absence. These things I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as the colors of the United States of America are retrieved by the Division of Capitol Police and the Richmond Symphony Chorus departs the chamber.
Motion. Call. Mr. Speaker, permission to retire the colors. Retire the colors. Retrieve colors. Members may be seated. <laughs> Members elect, please be advised that the House Clerk's Office received from the Virginia Department of Elections notification that pursuant to section 24.2-679 of the Code of Virginia, meetings of the Board of Elections were held to examine the official abstracts of votes for the general election held on November 3rd, 2015. The results of those meetings, along with the determination of the Virginia House of Delegates, confirmed that each member seated here today was duly elected a member of the Virginia House of Delegates for a two-year term beginning the second Wednesday of January 2016. The results of the Department of Election meetings, recounts, and an official list of winners are on file up in the clerk's office, which means I can forego reading the lengthy list. In addition, members elect will find on their desk an individualized uh, certificate of election for you to keep and an oath of office, which needs to be signed and returned to me kindly today. The members elect will answer the roll call by indicating their presence on the electronic voting board. A quorum is present. <laughs> Members elect, please stand. Are you ready to uh, receive your oath of office? If so, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear, I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. In the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all duties incumbent upon me as a member of the Virginia House of Delegates, according to the best of my abilities. So help me God. Congratulations. Come to order. Members, the, the new members, newest members, you may put on your pin if you're so inclined now or later. I'd also kindly ask again that you sign the O's on your desk, leave them there. Staff will pick them up once uh, we're finished with our business this afternoon. The next order of business is the election of the Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates. <coughs> Nominations are now in order. The gentleman from Scott, uh, Delegate Kilgore.
Uh, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to nominate William J. Howe as, uh, for Speaker of the House. It's, it's been a pleasure uh, of mine to serve with uh, uh, Bill Howe for the last 22 years uh, in this House of Delegates. First met uh, Bill and his lovely wife, Ceci, uh, right before I was elected uh, to the House of Delegates. And at that time, he was so supportive and had a lot of advice uh, for uh, those of us in that freshman class of 1993, and he was just such a uh, great friend. Uh, Bill has done an excellent job, as we all know, on uh, making uh, our life a little bit easier here uh, as members of the House of Delegates on his streamlining process and, and actions that he's been able uh, to take. And most of the public uh, know him as Mr. Speaker, but I believe that those of us in this House chamber uh, know him as our friend. So it is my honor and privilege to nominate our friend, William J. Howe, to be our speaker in this House of Delegates. Thank you. Thank you. The gentleman from Fairfax, Delegate Sickles. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to second the nomination. Thank you. I rise today to second the nomination of William J. Howe to be speaker of this historic House of Delegates, the oldest continuously operating legislative body in the Western Hemisphere. When I was growing up, ladies and gentlemen, never in my wildest dreams did it occur to me that someday I would travel the dangerous interstate of 95 and on the country back roads of Stafford County to a quaint log cabin on the shores of the Rappahannock. But alas, I have done so. <laughs> While there, we share stories on the state of the common, Commonwealth and other deep thoughts on where we should be going, and it has been a great privilege for me. Those of us serving on this side of the aisle know Mr. Speaker as fair and patient, well, mostly patient, presider and leader for our Commonwealth. I am fully confident that our, all of our new members on both sides will soon learn of this man's generosity of spirit and good humor that can bring laughter to this chamber, even at the end of a very long day, waiting for the other body down the hall to do something just do anything, really. <laughs> Over these next two years, my friends, those of us on this side will disagree with the majority on many matters of great import and personal concern to us and our constituents, matters of deep conviction. We, we may not be able to resolve, or honestly, mostly, maybe not be able to resolve these differences. You may hear an impassioned speech. But don't forget, our future is as bright as we can make it. So ladies and gentlemen, we are looking forward to the opportunity under the leadership of Speaker Howe to forge a dynamic plan for the next two years together in a bipartisan spirit, building on his legacy of making the right investments in our basic infrastructure, continuing Virginia's transformation to a 21st century economy, taking care of those veterans who now need our help, all in a fiscally responsible manner. That is why I urge you to look down on your desk and find those buttons and push the green button for William J. Howe this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there further nominations? Hearing none. I declare the nominations are closed. All those in favor of William James Howe to be Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates shall indicate such on the electronic voting board. The rolls shall be closed. I am proud to declare William J. Howe duly elected Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates. The, <laughs> the following members. The following members are appointed to escort the Speaker-elect to the Speaker's rostrum to receive the oath of office. Delegates Kilgore, Robinson, Webber, Morris, Pillion, Watts, Sickles, and Toscano. Please go to the uh, rear of the chamber and escort the Speaker-elect in.
closer. The oath of office will now be administered by the Honorable Donald W. Lemons, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Virginia. Speaker-elect Howe, are you prepared to take the oath of office? Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge. All of the duties incumbent upon me. All of the duties incumbent upon me. As Speaker of the House of Delegates. As Speaker of the House of Delegates. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind. Thank you very much. Very generous. Um, not as long as what you gave the choir, but that's okay. <laughs> very appreciative. Um, it, uh, it is truly an honor to stand here today before you. I'm humbled by the trust uh, that you have placed in me to lead this distinguished body again. Words cannot express how grateful I am for your support and prayers. The office of speaker is a constitutional office that comes with significant responsibilities as well as obligations, not to one party, but to every member of the House and to the people of this great Commonwealth. I do not take these duties lightly, and I'll continue to serve with the discretion judiciousness, honor, and integrity that the people of this Commonwealth demand. There are 11 new members with us today. I welcome each of you and your families to Mr. Jefferson's capital. We are excited to have you join us here in the House of Delegates Chamber today. It really is a distinct honor to be able to serve in this body. I don't need to remind anyone of some of the gentlemen and gentlewomen who have walked these aisles before. Madison, Jefferson, Henry, on and on. They are a constant reminder, they should be a constant reminder to each of us of the tremendous responsibility that we bear as leaders of the Commonwealth. None of us are entitled to the seats that we hold, and we can never forget why we are here today, to serve our fellow citizens. As we begin this session, I think it's important to reflect on some of the successes that we've had in recent years. We've seen what happens when we put our ideological differences aside and work together. Last year, thanks to the hard work of so many in this chamber, we adjourned early for the first time in 15 years. <laughs> Chairman Jones and I are going to try and do it two days early this year. We passed legislation. <laughs> We passed legislation to make college more affordable, keep students safe on campus, provide our veterans with better health care access. In the 2016 session, we'll continue to build on this record of success. Virginia faces no shortage of challenges. Our biggest priority this year is going to be crafting a new two-year state budget. Last year, not only did we adopt a responsible budget, but we did so ahead of schedule. Our conservative budgeting led to the largest single year of revenue surplus in the history of this Commonwealth. Our responsibility this year is to replicate that success. We must continue to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. While Washington drowns in deficits and debt, we've had a constitutional obligation to balance our budget. We must meet the needs of the Commonwealth without saddling our children and grandchildren with a bill. Just as important as the budget is the matter in which we write it. We have a duty to conduct the people's business openly and transparently.
Chairman Jones, the Appropriations Committee, and their work has always been open and accessible. This year, we are strengthening our commitment to the public and to transparency by adopting in our rules a 48-hour review period before voting on the final conference report. This change will ensure that not only legislators, but the public have an opportunity to be fully apprised of what's in the budget before this body takes action. Additionally, in an effort to maintain and build on the body's commitment to transparency, we will no longer hold committee meetings at the members' desks in the chamber. While I know this could be an inconvenience to some of the members, it is an important signal to the public that we are committed to openness. In addition to the budget, a number of other pressing issues require our attention. We must remain focused on offering real solutions to our fellow citizens. Virginia's economy, while improving, is not out of the woods. Unemployment numbers may have rebounded. Virginians continue to feel squeezed, however. We must redouble our efforts to encourage entrepreneurs and innovation to promote positive business climate that will attract big companies from around the world and to strengthen our workforce for the 21st century. Education is also vital to the Commonwealth's long-term economic success. Our goal is to provide every student with the opportunity to succeed. This means investing in a strong public education system. I believe it also means providing choice and flexibility for parents and students. This year, we have an opportunity to pass a major amendment to our Constitution that will expand educational opportunities. President Obama has said that charter schools, quote, are the gateways to higher education and endless possibilities, lifting up students of all backgrounds and empowering them to achieve a brighter future. I think Republicans and Democrats can find common grounds on charter schools in Virginia. I would be remiss if I did not mention health care. This chamber has collectively expressed its will on Medicaid expansion no fewer than five times in the last two years. Our goal rather should be improving access and keeping costs low. There are a number of proposals on Virginia's longstanding certificate of public need laws this year. Those proposals deserve full and due consideration. It's also imperative that we continue to strengthen our mental and behavioral health system and continue to invest in the health care safety net. We're not always going to agree. We will exchange lengthy dialogue between each other over our, our ideas and how to move Virginia forward. I encourage all of us to do so in a civil and respectful way. That is what our constituents expect and demand. I'll conclude by again thanking you, thanking each of you for your service and your dedication to this Commonwealth. We have a long road ahead, but I'm confident that we will find success. Thank you. The house will be at ease.
House come to order. I was just telling Jeff, I think I'm going to have to dial my speeches back a bit. <laughs> the next order of business is the election of the clerk of the House of Delegates. Nominations are now in order. The gentleman Mr. from Henry, Mr. O'Bannon. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I rise for the purpose of placing in nomination Paul Nardo for the office of clerk of the Virginia House of Delegates and keeper of the roles of the Commonwealth. Those of us who have had the honor to serve in this historic chamber know how essential the operation of the House is to our work. We must have a clerk's office that is effi effective, efficient, and professional. Under Paul Nardo's leadership, our clerk's office is just that. We, and in turn the people we serve, are the beneficiaries of an extraordinary enterprise operated by an outstanding and exemplary staff. When you consider what we're able to accomplish in this chamber during sessions that last only 60 or 46 days, you begin to realize how exceptional and accomplished our clerk's office is. Paul Nardo and, his, and the staff he leads not only assure that our trains run on time, they never forget that each one of us represents 80,000 Virginians. And ultimately, it's the people of Virginia who are served by our clerk. And that is a responsibility that Paul and his ta staff take very seriously. It is not by happenstance that this capital and this chamber operate so smoothly. The tasks required of this work are intensely detail-oriented. The House of Delegates is not, I can assure you, a place that runs itself. The efficient operation to which we have become so accustomed is the byproduct of long days, constant attention, and a continuing effort to make the best even better. That requires a leader who is committed to public service, and Paul Nardo is that leader. Paul has devoted more than 25 years of his professional career to public service. His service began in the Speaker's office in 2002. He became our clerk in 2011. He has consistently demonstrated the ability, the dedication, and the fairness essential to performing his job. And he has never wavered from a devotion to this House and its unique place in the history of our Commonwealth and our nation. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored to place Paul Nardo's name in nomination for another term as Clerk of the House and Keeper of the Rolls. Thank you. Is there a uh, second? Gentlewoman from Alexandria, Ms. Herring. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for the purpose of seconding the nomination of Paul Nardo. Gentleman has floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, members of the body, Paul Nardo has been a dedicated public servant for over 25 years. And since his election for the first time in 2011, he has served efficiently and honorably in the position to which I second his nomination. In his work across Mr. Jefferson's capital, we have seen the introduction of new technology for our membership and to make the process of legislating more transparent to the public. From iPads to e-filing to a new General Assembly website, I know with his re-election, we will see even more progress in this legislative term. Thank you. Thank you. Are there... Are there further nominations? Hearing none, I declare the nominations are closed. All those in favor? of Gary Paul Nardo to be the clerk of the Virginia House of Delegates shall indicate such on the electronic voting board. <laughs> clerk will close the roll. Ayes 100. Ayes 100. The clerk will uh, close the roll. The vote has been announced. I declare that G. Paul Nardo is duly elected clerk of the Virginia House of Delegates. The clerk will announce the committee to escort the clerk elect to the well to receive the oath of office. The Speaker appoints the following members to escort the Kirk elect to the well of the House of Delegates. Delegates Byron, O'Bannon, Miller, Massey, Plum, and Herring.
The um, oath of office will now be administered by the Honorable Donald W. Lemons, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Virginia. Mr. Nardo, are you prepared to take the oath of office? Yes, I am, sir. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge. All of the duties incumbent upon me. All of the duties incumbent upon me. As clerk of the House of Delegates. As clerk of the House of Delegates. To the best of my ability. To the best so of my ability. God. So help me God. Thank you. The next order of business is the election of the Sergeant at Arms. Uh, nominations are now in order. The gentleman from Augusta, Mr. Landis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, rise for the purpose of a nomination. The gentleman has the floor. Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen on the House, it's really my honor to nominate Jay Pearson to serve our as our Sergeant at Arms for our Virginia House of Delegates for our next two-year term. Um, Many of you that have served uh, in the House know that Jay grew up in Buckingham County, rural Buckingham County, and he now lives in Richmond. Jay has been a long-time dedicated employee of the Commonwealth of Virginia. He has served not only as our Sergeant-in-Arms, but serves our House of Delegates as the Information and Communications Services Director. He's active in the Rotary Club of Richmond, and he follows, and I think this is very important for someone who serves and works with us, he follows this civic club's motto, service above self. And I think he does that every day in his life. So Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen of the House, it's my honor and privilege to place in nomination and I hope the House will elect, re-elect Jay Pearson to be our Sergeant in Arms. Thank you. The gentleman from Fairfax, Ms. Uh, Fillercorn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House of Delegates, I rise to second the nomination of John L. Pearson, otherwise known to all of us as Jay Pearson. Jay Pearson is Sar uh, Sergeant at Arms for the Virginia House of Delegates. As you heard from my colleague, he's a member, uh, actually a native of uh, Lynchburg, and began his career not so recently, back in 2002 at the state capitol as house enrolling assistant. He's survived, he has uh, provided a lot of service in a wide variety of positions, including information and public uh, relations officers, communications services director as well. But we all know him dearly as a gentleman who carries the mace into our historic chamber every single day. We're grateful for his work preserving the decorum of the house and also assisting us with distribution of legislation as well as other resources in the House of Delegates. We all agree that Mr. Pearson serves this chamber with distinction, and I strongly support John L. Pearson and encourage my colleagues to support his nomination as Sergeant of Arms for the next two-year term. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are there further nominations? Hearing none, I declare the nominations are closed. All those in favor of John L. Pearson, Jr. to be the Sergeant of Arms of the House of Delegates shall indicate such on the electronic voting board. The clerk will close the roll. Ayes uh, 9, ayes uh, 100, no 0. Ayes uh, 100, no 0. Uh, the uh, clerk will uh, announce the committee to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hearing none, the clerk will close the roll. I declare, John L. Pearson, it's been a while since I've done this. John L. Pearson, <laughs> Jr. Duly elected Sergeant at Arms of the Virginia House of Delegates, the Sergeant at Arms elect will present himself in the well of the House of Delegates to receive the oath of office. The oath of office will now be administered by the Honorable G. Paul Nardo, Clerk of the House of Delegates.
I will faithfully and impartially discharge all duties incumbent upon me. On me. Sergeant Arms of the House of Delegates. Sergeant Arms of the House of Delegates. For the best of my ability. For the best of my ability. What have we got? The clerk will report a resolution. House Joint Resolution, excuse me, House Resolution 60, 2016-2017, Rules of the General Assembly of Virginia. The gentleman from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the clerk said, I'm going to now go over the rules for the 2016-17 session. There are four different rules changes. They generally come from a variety of sources. They come from members. As the Speaker mentioned, the last one I'm going to go over today, the 48 hours, was actually something he asked me to look into. And I've actually worked with Minority Leader on that one a little bit. And also, the clerk's office sometimes has some good suggestions. So let me walk them uh, through. First of all, I want to start with rule two. You will find that on lines 45 and 55. This deals with if there's a, would be a vacancy in the uh, speaker's office. Currently, our practice is very, very old. If you look in the rules, if there's a vacancy, it basically is the committee chairman that's named in rule 16 and lists of sort of seniority when those committees came in. And we felt like that needed to be updated. So what this rule basically says that during session, there'll be an election. I think that's the way it should be. There'll be a seven day period and there'll be an election. When we're out of session, the p and &E committee will meet uh, within three days, which four year, not within three days, on three days, have to give three days notice. They will meet and then they will have an election. That person will then be speaker until we come into session. So that is the change in rule two. Rule four comes from a suggestion from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management. They got together a task force with the clerk's office, the Capitol Police, and some other folks, always trying to look at sort of ways to make sure we're prepared. And they wanted to make sure that we had a mechanism by which if there was an emergency or a disaster that we could uh, basically convene somewhere else. So that one um, basically does that. Rule, the third rule change uh, is dealing with rule 49. You'll find that on pages 450 and 450, excuse me, you'll find that on lines 450 and 451, page eight. This is the pro forma calendar. A lot of you are familiar with that. As you know, when we do a pro forma session, you don't have to come. There are usually several of us. We generally do it to be able to move bills up. Currently, the practices on that calendar has to be everything, committee memorial resolutions, other things that have already been on the calendar. This allows us to only set out those items, it'll be easier for the clerk's office. I think it'll be a little bit clearer for the public. Finally, the fourth rules change is one the speaker alluded to in his speech, which I think is the most important. That does several things. Uh, that is rule 75C. You'll find that on lines uh, 613, uh, page 11. And it basically does four things. As the speaker said, it basically requires a 48-hour notice when the budget hits your desk. I think there's a good transparency measure. And it requires three other things that have to be set out, which is, I think, very good as far as the budgeting process. Any non-state agency you find in the budget, any item in, com in the conference report not included in the budget bill is passed by either the House or the Senate, and any item that represents legislation that failed in either House. So you'll be able to see those very quickly and sort of ascertain what those things are. Uh, Mr. Speaker, those are the changes, and I would move adoption of the resolution. Shall the resolution be agreed to? I'm sorry. Speaker. I apologize. Gentleman Charlottesville, Mr. Nascano. Speaker, speak to the resolution. Gentleman, may proceed. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, I rise to uh, recommend you vote for this resolution. I think that uh, there's a lot of good work, especially in the transparency area in terms of the budget. Um, the good news about the 48-hour rule is that constituents will have an opportunity to look at the budget. The bad news is that no more, no longer will a member ever be able to say that they voted for the budget without knowing what's in it. So uh, with that, I hope that you'll... <laughs> vote green on this uh, res fine resolution. Shall the resolution be agreed to? Clerk will 
will close the roll. Ayes 100, no zero. Ayes 100, no zero. The resolution is agreed to. The uh, gentleman from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox, will advise the Senate that the House of uh, Delegates is organized and ready to proceed with business. The House will be at ease. I'm rusty.
House will come to order. Members, please take your seats. Sergeant Arms. Mr. Speaker, a message from the Senate. The uh, Senator from James City County, Senator Norman. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, having been given a dispensation to come on the floor of the House of Delegates, I have been directed. <laughs> I have been directed by the President of the Senate to inform the House of Delegates that the Senate is organized and ready to proceed with business, and we welcome you to our chamber. Thank you, sir. The um, clerk will announce the committee on the part of the House of Delegates to notify the governor. House will come to order. Clerk will, clerk will report a resolution. House Joint Resolution 150 notifying the Governor of Organization resolved by the House of Delegates and Senate concurring that a committee be appointed composed of six on the part of the House and five on the part of the Senate to notify the Governor that the General Assembly is duly organized and ready to receive any communication he may desire to make. General Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox. Mr. Speaker, I move adoption of the resolution. As many as favor adoption of the resolution will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The uh, resolution is read to. The General from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox, will communicate the action of the House of Delegates to the Senate and request its concurrence. <laughs> the House will be at ease. Sergeant Arms. Mr. Speaker, a message from the Senate. The Senator for James City County, Senator Norman. Mr. Speaker, to have my passport stamped twice in the same day is truly a historic moment. And I've been directed by the President of the Senate to inform the House of Delegates that the Senate has agreed to House Joint Resolution 150. Thank you. <laughs> the clerk will announce the committee on the part of the House delegates to notify the governor. The speaker appoints delegates Cox, Landis, Cole, Gilbert, Spruill, and Toscano. Delegates Cox, Landis, Cole, Gilbert, Spruill, and Toscano to notify the governor on part of the House of Delegates of the Virginia General Assembly is duly organized. The um, House will be at ease. House will come to order. Members, please take your seats. The uh, clerk will report a resolution. House Joint Resolution Number 37, providing for certain joint assemblies a schedule for conduct of business, among other things. And as the clerk said, it's the procedural resolution we see every year. Uh, it basically establishes deadlines, et cetera, so you can sort of look through and 
see all of that. There are two changes from last year, uh, both I think you'll be pleased with. The first one's on line 40 and 41. It simply pushes back only for committee and memorial resolutions, the co patroning deadline. Hopefully that's going to keep us from getting that snafu we've gotten in in years past where our, uh, memorial and committee resolutions got hung up in the Senate. Number two, it's nothing more than a repeat of the rules. It's got the 48-hour provision, the other three provisions in the budget set out. So those are the two changes, Mr. Speaker. I hope you be the uh, pleasure of the House to adopt the resolution. Shall the resolution be agreed to? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 98, no zero. Ayes 98, no zero. The resolution is agreed to. The clerk will report a resolution. House. Joint Resolution 38, establishing a schedule for the conduct of business for the pre-filing period of the 2017 regular session of the General Assembly of Virginia. General Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox. 38 uh, is also when we do every year. It basically establishes all of your pre-filing deadlines, et cetera, for next year so you can sort of see what the calendar is going to look like. So with that, Mr. Speaker, it would be the pleasure of the House to adopt the resolution. Shall the resolution be agreed to? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 98, no zero. Ayes 98, no zero. Resolution is agreed to. Um, gentleman from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox, will communicate the action of the House of Delegates to the Senate and request its concurrence on joint resolutions 37 and 38. House will be at ease. Mr. Speaker, a message from the Senate. <laughs> the uh, gentleman from <laughs> Hanover, Senator McDougall. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've been directed by the President of the Senate to inform the House of Delegates that the Senate has decided to just wait one more year before we do this. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> that we've agreed to joint resolution 37 and 38. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Those guys are a ball of fire, aren't they? <laughs> Clerk will report a resolution. House Resolution 71. Uh, yep. Salaries, contingent, and incidental expenses resolved by the House that the Comptroller is directed to issue his warrants on the Treasurer payable from the contingent fund of the House to accomplish the work of the House of Delegates during the 2016 regular session of the General Assembly. Necessary payments to cover salaries of temporary employees as well as contingent and incidental expenses will be certified by the Clerk or his designee. That about sums it up. Gentlemen, I Mr. would Jones. move the adoption. <laughs> um, gentlemen, Suffolk, Mr. Jones. Since there's nothing left to say, okay. I would move the adoption. Shall the resolution be agreed to? Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 95, no zero. Ayes 95, no zero. The resolution is agreed to. Does the um, clerk have any announcements? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Speaker.
In addition to the um, meeting schedule for this afternoon, the um, House Appropriations Committee is going to meet one half hour after recess of the House upstairs in the ninth floor appropriation room for a briefing on the budget. Uh, one half hour um, after recess here. Also, a joint uh, House and Senate Courts of Justice Committee is going to meet now at 345 for a presentation by the Chief Justice and others on the Supreme Court. That meeting now is 345 in House Room C. In addition, Mr. Speaker um, has uh, asked me to make the, uh, announce the following committee assignments effective today. Oh. Speaker's committee assignments effective today. House Privileges and Elections Committee. Speaker appoints House p and &E. Speaker appoints Delegates Cole, Chairman, Ingram, Jones, Albo, O'Bannon, Miller, Vice Chairman, Landis, Hugo, Ranson, O'Quinn, Minchu, Rush, Fowler, Adams, Mieres, Sickles, Rasul, Lindsay, Murphy, Torian, Price, and Boisco. For the Committee for the Courts of Justice. Courts of Justice, the Speaker appoints Delegates Albo, Chair, Kilgore, Bell of Albemarle, Vice Chair, Klein, Gilbert, Miller, Lupasi, Habib, Minchu, Morris, Leftwich, Adams, Campbell, Collins, Mieres, Watts, Toscano, Herring, McClellan, Hope, Mason, Kreisick, and Scott Surreville. <clears throat> House Committee on Education. The Speaker appoints for Education, Delegate Landis, Chairman, Lingamfelter, Cole, Hoagie, Vice Chairman, Massey, Greeson, Bell of Stanton, Lemunyan, Robinson, Yost, Yancey, Dudenheffer, Davis, Leftwich, LaRock, as well as Delegates McClellan, Tyler, Bulova, Keem, Hester, Lindsay, and Bagby. House Committee on General Laws. Speaker appoints Delegates Gilbert, Chairman, Albo, Wright, Peace, Vice Chair, Anderson, Greeson, Knight, Lemunyan, Helsel, Robinson, Yost, Hodges, Bell of Stanton, Minshew, Leftwich, Ward, Bulova, Carr, Torian, McQuinn, Hester, and Aird. For the Committee on Transportation, the Speaker appoints the following delegates. Delegates uh, Villanueva, Chair, Hugo, Vice Chair, Garrett, Habib, Anderson, Minchu, Yancey, Dudenheffer, Lemunyan, Davis, Taylor, Austin, LaRock, Pillion, Adams, Ward, Toscano, McQuinn, Carr, Fillercorn, Plum, and Bagby. Committee on Finance, the Speaker appoints following delegates. Delegates Ware, Chairman, Orock, Byron, Cole, Hugo, Klein, Vice Chair, Marshall of Prince William, Pogi, Head, Farrell, Ferris, Fowler, Bloxham, Taylor, Freitas, Watts, Keem, Billercorn, Quarry, Sullivan, Murphy, and Aird. For the Committee on Appropriations, the Speaker appoints the following Delegates Jones, Chair, Ingram, Cox, Landis, Vice Chair, O'Bannon, Lingamfelter, Poindexter, Massey, Peace, Greeson, Knight, Anderson, 
Garrett, Stolle, Rush, Torian, Hester, Sickles, James, Carr, McQuinn, and Lindsay. For the Committee on Counties, Cities, and Towns, the Speaker appoints the following. Delegates Ingram, Chair, Marshal of Prince William, Marshal of Danville, Poindexter, Moorfield, Stolle, Vice Chair, Wilt, Morris, Hodges, Webert, Taylor, Austin, Campbell, Pillion, Collins, Spruill, Herring, Mason, Heretic, Boisco, Bell of Loudon, and Kryzik. For the Committee on Commerce and Labor, the Speaker appoints delegates Kilgore, Chair, Byron, Vice Chair, Ware, Hugo, Marshall of Danville, Klein, Miller, Luposi, Bell of Albemarle, Habib, Villanueva, Farrell, O'Quinn, Yancey, Ranson, McClellan, Ward, Tyler, Spruill, Keem, Fillercorn, Corey. For the Committee on Health, Welfare, and Institutions, the Speaker appoints the following. Delegates Orock, Chair, O'Bannon, Vice Chair, Bell of Albemarle, Peace, Hoagie, Bell of Stanton, Garrett, Stolle, Robinson, Helsel, Yost, Hodges, Edmonds, Head, Farrell, Spruill, Sickles, Hope, James, Levine, Price, and Aird. For the Committee on Agriculture, Chesapeake, and Natural Resources, the Speaker appoints the following. Delegates Marshall of Danville, Chair, Ware, Wright, Orock, Poindexter, Vice Chair, Hoagie, Knight, Edmonds, Wilt, Moorfield, Webert, Ranson, Ferris, Miller, Bloxham, Plum, Bulova, James, Torian, Keem, Lopez, and Sullivan. For the Committee on Militia, Police, and Public Safety, the Speaker appoints the following. Delegates Lingenfelter, Chair, Wright, Vice Chair, Klein, Gilbert, Moorfield, Edmonds, Wilt, Webert, Morris, Ferris, O'Quinn, Head, Rush, Fowler, Davis, Tyler, Hope, Corey, Lopez, Simon, Rasul, and Bell of Loudon. For the Committee on Science and Technology, Speaker appoints the following. Delegates Anderson, Chair, Marshal of Prince William, Byron, Robinson, Vice Chair, Helsel, Dudenheffer, Leftwich, Adams, Larock, Bloxham, Pillion, Villanueva, Austin, Campbell, Freitas, Watts, Plum, Lopez, Simon, Rasul, Levine, and Heretic. And for the Committee on Rules, Speaker appoints the following. Delegate Howe, Chair, Landis, Cox, Vice Chair, Kilgore, Ware, Jones, Orock, Knight, Ingram, Massey, Habib, Plum, Toscano, Spruill, and Carr. Mr. Speaker, uh, copies of the committee assignments uh, will be available in the rear of the chamber when uh, members depart for the recess. Finally, since several people asked, special session 2015 and one uh, ended at 11.59 a.m. when the new General Assembly began. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that completes the announcements I have, sir. Yeah. Um, the gentleman from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox. Mr. Speaker, I uh, move the House stand in recess until 6.30, if I could quickly explain. Uh, everyone remember that tonight is the State of the Commonwealth. We come back at 6.30 so you can be in your seats in plenty of time. The speech actually starts at 7. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I move the House stand in recess. The gentleman from Colonial Heights, Mr. Cox, moves the House stand in recess until 6.30. As many as favor that motion will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. That motion is agreed to. The House stands in recess until 6.30 p.m.